Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number four of uh, my series where I'm building the E-War Stingray, which is going to be kind of a knockoff of the Fender Meteor because I think it's a really cool looking guitar. Anyway, uh, so in the last video we went ahead and we finished getting all the body parts prepared for our uh, body blank. Remember this is going to be uh, it's going to have a separate core, a top and a back, and we got all those guys ready. We got them glued up. We got our body alignment fixture uh, made for the CNC machine, and we actually got our holes drilled into these body parts too, which is going to allow us to place each of these pieces onto that CNC, CNC machine one at a time and get them lined up perfectly and do the different operations we want to do in the different parts before we go ahead and glue this whole thing together. So anyway, uh, I'm ready to start cutting out some of this stuff, control cavities and uh, uh, the profile outline and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm ready to get going, so why don't we move on over to that CNC machine and get, get cutting away. Okay, so I hope you can see that. So I've got my fixture uh, uh, clamped down onto my CNC machine, and I've got the spindle. That's a quarter inch uh, down cut uh, uh, end mill, and I went ahead and I've lined it up in the center of my quarter inch hole down here, which is my XY0. So now I'm just going to simply come over to the machine and tell it zero the X and zero the Y. Okay, so now I just told the computer that this is my X, Y, zero. As long as I don't move that fixture anywhere, I could put all of these pieces on there one at a time or all together and be able to cut all the CNC machining operations. Uh, without resetting up this machine again and again, and it should come out dead on perfect. I'm hoping, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But anyway, so the first thing I wanna do, is I wanna cut some of these pieces uh, before I get them glued together, and I wanna do some of the operations. Some very simple, I could do it afterwards, but I've decided I wanna go ahead and, and tackle it now. And uh, one of the things I wanna do is I'm gonna cut a shallow pass profile uh, around the edge. I'm only gonna go an eighth of an inch deep, and I'm only gonna do it on the top. That way, once we get it glued together, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bandsaw out the top before I put it back on the machine to do the final cut, because this is not a huge machine, and that would be a big cut cutting through an uh, inch and three quarter of hardwood like that with a bit like that. It would be a lot of stress on the machine, so I'm going to cut it out with the bandsaw first and let the uh, CNC machine do the final pass on it to get it cleaned up really nice. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to do the shallow pass on that, and I'm also going to do my controls, uh, control holes while, uh, while I got this piece on there and I'm doing that too. So anyway, let me set this on there and we're going to get rolling with that right now. Okay, so I think that came out really cool. I've got a really nice crisp uh, line around the outside, which is where I'm gonna cut later with the bandsaw. And I've got my three control holes here too that uh, for the potentiometers. So while I've got my quarter inch bit still in this thing here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and flip this guy over and do some of the operations from the back, which is gonna be recessing these areas where the pots go because you know this, this top right now is 3 eighths of an inch thick and I wanna get right around these guys down to about an eighth of an inch thick. And for my, uh, my blade switch up here too, I wanna thin that down as well too. And then I'm also gonna switch over and put in my one inch bit and, uh, and cut, the, uh, cut the part of the pocket for the control cavity into this top right here. And then when I glue them together, they'll all line up really nicely. Let's see, I just got to find my spot here. There we go. Okay, so one of the things I think is really cool about Vetric V Carves, which is this program I'm showing you right here, is you can do a double sided, a two sided uh, machining. The layout. So when you originally set up the job setup, you tell it you're going to do a double sided, which you can see right over here. Anyway, um, so when you're doing something like a guitar body that is really handy, 
that is really handy because some of the things happen to the top and some of them happen to the bottom. And so when you design, you just simply click this button up here and it'll flip over the design. Now, if you see closely here, some of these lines are like grayed out or that's actually like a light green. Those are the ones that are actually usable and, and uh, you could do something with them from the top of the body. And then these dark black ones here are the ones that I have transferred to this uh, back layer. And that's what we're going to work on now. So while I still have my top up on the CNC machine, of course, I just flipped it over. There's a couple things with this control cavity I want to do to the top. So, and one of those things is these guys right here. Those guys right there, I want to recess those deeper into the top to give uh, room for the shaft to work because that top is three eighths of an inch thick and uh, that's too thick for my potentiometers and my switches. And another one of the tool paths I want to run uh, from the bottom here is this other guy right here. You see, I just highlighted that in pink. That's going to be the cavity itself now, which will ultimately cut all the way through the uh, thickness of the guitar. But while this is all apart, remember, remember these guitars are an inch and three quarter thick, and that's a long way for a bit to reach down inside there. So I like to do this top while the body is still apart like this. So I'm going to use my one inch uh, surfacing bit to cut out probably an extra eighth of an inch out of this uh, area right in here, which is going to get me a little closer to my, uh, my uh, potentiometers working. And then this other uh, circles I showed you a second ago, I'm going to take another eighth out of those, which will give me a one eighth of an inch uh, thick top right where the potentiometers and the switch connect. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, put these tool pads together, send them over to ready to control and get cutting away. Okay, so our core piece is coming out looking really good. Um, you can see I've cut all the way through with our uh, control cavity, and I've also went ahead and cut out a little uh, weight relief thing. Um, they're still held in by these couple of tabs here. See those tabs? That, that keeps the, the piece you're cutting out uh, from getting free and, and banging around, maybe breaking a bit or tearing up your work. So I just gotta take my little handsaw and cut those couple of guys out there, and then I think this core is ready to go. So we've done, we did the profile cut around the outside just because I like the way it looks. Uh, we did our uh, uh, weight relief cavity here, and this is going to be our control cavity over here, which kind of is going to balance the weight relief cavity on this side here. And then I also did three channels. I got this one here was from my uh, bridge ground, and I've got these two as a channel from each of the pickups down into the control cavity. And uh, of course, we're, we're going to do the pickups and we're going to do the neck pocket once this thing is all glued up, all three parts glued together. So let me get these two guys cut out. Then we're going to get the back of this body down on the CNC machine and do a couple more operations on it. Okay, so this is our back. Uh, this is our back plate. It's the three eighths of an inch thick. We're going to tackle a couple things that have to do with the control cavity cover or the control cavity itself. So we're going to uh, cut out the inner profile of the control cavity uh, uh, pocket. We're also going to cut the lip around the edge that the control cavity cover will sit on, and we're going to cut the uh, magnet holes, which are going to be one quarter inch in diameter and eighth inch deep holes in each of the spots where the magnets are going to go. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get this face up on the CNC machine over there and get cutting away.
Okay, so there's my control cavity cover. I still have the plug in there and it also left just a paper thin uh, piece of wood. I'm gonna have to go ahead and knife that out. Um, I measured this as 0.375 inches. That's where I set the cut depth. I should have set it just a, a one or two thousandths more just to be sure I cut all the way through it. Well, live and learn. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out and then see, I wanna, I'm really curious how well it lines up on top of my, uh, my on top of my other cuts in there. Okay, so I, uh, I went and took some of these 3 8 dowels and I just sanded them down just a little bit just to make them uh, slip in and out of there nice. And I've got them in there and I can see my control cavity. Now I cut that cavity on a little bit on each of three layers including recessing for the controls uh, on the back of the top. And boy, I mean they lined up just beautifully. They line, That looks really good. I'm very happy with all that. And I've got the front sides looking good and it's all ready to go. Um, I think it looks good. I'm uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm ready to get this thing glued up. I got the core ready too. So anyway, uh, I'm going to get set up with some, I'm going to mix up a little of that Ultra Cat glue and we're going to get gluing away. Okay, so my glue's mixed up. It's a nice creamy consistency and seems like a good, uh, good thickness too for what we're doing. And I've got all my parts here laid out. I've got my temporary dowels in place here that are going to keep us aligned when we glue it up. And it is just time to start gluing. I've told you before, I really like this Ultra Cat glue. It's uh, brown in color for one thing, which I like. It uh, dries very, very hard. Um, and uh, it's just a really great all-around glue. I feel like I'm making mix up probably too much of the stuff. Uh, but I'm learning. You know, I wish I could get it down to where I could mix exactly the right amount. That's probably the one drawback. You'll probably wind up using, using up more of this than I would have tight bond or pre-mixed glue. Only because uh, you have to mix up a mount and what you don't use you throw away. So I'm going to get this brush on here. Try to keep it back from some of these edges and then I'll roll it out to, to get it to a consistent deal. I just don't want too much dripping down inside those uh, the weight relief cavity or any of these other cavities. So. Okay, so that glue up turned out uh, just fine. I've got now one solid piece. Uh, I went ahead and took a 3 8 drill bit and cleaned out both of my two alignment holes. And, uh, and I, got, I got perfect alignment, incidentally, amongst all these different layers. So I think it looks great. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this out along this line here to get rid of all this excess material. Of course, I'm going to keep my two alignment pins in place. And then get back onto the CNC and we still got to cut the both pickups in and we're going to have to cut the uh, we're going to drill the holes for our uh, our fancy little brass uh, tail piece we got both the front and the back so uh, anyway let's get that on there oh and then we still got the neck pocket to do but I think I'm saving that one for the next uh, next video because this is going to be an angled neck pocket and I want to get into the angle portion of the thing and how I figured it out and all that so we'll probably save that for the next video but anyway, let's go ahead and get this cut out and get it back on the CNC machine and get these last couple operations done. Okay, so it looks like those pickup uh, routes came out really nice. I just want to check real quick. I redesigned these after my uh, 
after the initial test run I did, I, I had to reshape them a little bit because I had the shape a little long. Looks like I've got a really nice one inch, uh, three quarter inch depth on the main part of the route. And these ears, they drop all the way down to one inch and that gives a little extra uh, room for the spring screw that they'll dangle down in there. And I wanted to check my nice. I'm just a little bit over in the width and the height for these uh, pickup covers which is just nice you want to leave a little bit of room for finish and let me try the yeah I've got a real nice uh, fit on the pickup base too so the ears fit in there nice everything fits really good we got a good depth so this thing is still up here on the CNC machine because I still want to go ahead and drill for my uh, my string through holes so let's uh, go ahead and put a 1 8 inch bit in this CNC machine and drill for those now Okay, guys, I guess we're going to leave it about there for now. We got a lot done, though. We got just about all the machining done on this body, I think, uh, except for the neck pocket, which we're going to tackle in the next video and routing around the edge. Uh, the machining work in this guy is done. And, uh, and I'll tell you, I am really loving learning how to use that machine and the techniques to make things happen on it. So it's really been a cool, really been a cool journey for me. I've basically had to rethink everything I knew before to operate this machine. And it's been really cool. I hope I'm encouraging somebody out there to give it a try. Um, anyway, uh, appreciate you all sticking around and watching. Uh, come back next week. We're going to tackle this neck pocket, which is going to be on an angle because we're using a, a tunematic style bridge. So that's going to be kind of interesting. We're going to take it all the way through the design and the uh, cutting of that neck pocket. I hope it comes out good. Anyway, I uh, hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.